Hey, it's Newell Christopher here. It's been a long time since I've done a video. I'm back driving in my car. I'm out to go get some takeout in uh, beautiful Simo Springs, Colorado, supporting some of our local businesses, which is always an important thing to do during this time. Just want to give you some thoughts on what I'm seeing, what I'm up to. You know, it's been a pretty crazy time in the real estate market. Here with what I'm doing with my businesses, I'm really focusing on builders. We have a lot of builders that are now pivoting and trying to figure out what they're going to do next. And I'm finding that a lot of them really figuring out the build to rent model and what does that mean to them. And there's a lot of builders that, that's, that pretty much ignored this. They didn't need it. It didn't matter. But now we're finding that this model can really work for these private builders who are a, a little bit cash strapped, don't have a lot of liquidity. We can work with institutional funds or, or any kind of fund that will do fee building. So they'll basically buy the land, build the house, and then pay the builder a fee to do this. And, and this kind of leads into the next thing with the housing market. It's really interesting what I'm seeing. And you know, a lot of this is anecdotal. A lot of this is, is what I personally see in the market is that we have a rush of builders now that are trying to hit that affordable market, hit that affordable house which also means an affordable rental, because if your builders are building affordable houses, not everybody can afford can get a mortgage, so they need to rent, and there's been a lack of affordable rentals, a lack of affordable homes. It's all uh, coming together now because of COVID-19, and it's, it's allowing these builders to go in, renegotiate land contact, contracts, build more affordable housing, and do it in a partnership with funds, with uh, investment funds that will supply the liquidity that they need, as I just said. This is going to help provide affordable homes for people out there that need them. And I think that it's really interesting dynamic, and this kind of leads also into just the housing market in general. There's a lot of people out there, and I've been debating a few people online, that we're going into a huge housing crash. You know, a, a lot of economists recently I've, I've seen have predicted maybe about a 14 or 20% decline in house sales, number of transactions for 2020, but it only makes sense. We're shutting down the whole economy economy for two or three months. That even, that, that, that makes about sense, right? But the value question is something that a lot of people I uh, don't really quite understand. I think there's there, there's still a huge demand for homes. There's still a huge undersupply. Even if there are a lot of foreclosures, there's a couple of things that you need to think about. One of those is that regardless of how many foreclosures there are, there's still people that need to live in houses, that need houses, and there's a huge shortage in this country. So for every home that gets foreclosed, that same person needs to go live somewhere. The second thing is, is that because of that lack of supply and because of the need for homes, it's gonna keep the values up, as well as you have so many investors that are waiting on the sidelines right now to buy houses. Uh, the reason being is that there, you know, even before COVID, we were doing a lot of business with funds that were out there buying in the suburban areas that are more affordable. The Urban Land Institute calls up hip, hip Serbia, and these are all areas that funds are already buying. And now look what's happening right now. People are moving to these areas and they're gonna to stay to these areas. They're moving out of the more urbanized areas into the more suburban and rural areas. And this was the same place that was affordable before and where funds were investing into, where builders were starting to invest into. And now there's a lot of guys that are ahead of the curve on this and they're going to uh, do very well because they were already investing in these markets. It's a lot of funds that we work with. I think that we're not going to see wholesale declines in house prices. There's just too much demand. I think that in certain markets, you are gonna see a lot, of, uh, a lot of foreclosures and some issues, but it's not as much as you think because think about the cohort of people who have lost their jobs. The majority of them are, are not homeowners. And so I'd be interested to see these numbers come out in the future, but leave a message or a, a comment. But I really look forward to hearing your thoughts on all this stuff. You know, everybody, which I hate it when people start emails with this, but be safe out there. Thanks.